Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. A common treatment, a uh, common over-the-counter medication for diarrhea is now being used by people who are addicted to opioids. And there is concern about that. Here to talk about it is Dr. Diane Colello, Executive and Medical Director of the New Jersey Poison Control Center. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. So why are people who are addicted to opioids taking Imodium? Mostly to avoid withdrawal. Uh, you know, one of the major burdens of opioid use disorder or opioid addiction is if the person cannot obtain heroin or oxycodone or fentanyl or whatever they take on a daily basis, um, then they start to have withdrawal symptoms. Those are really painful. We're talking flu-like symptoms, body aches, diarrhea, vomiting. And the active ingredient in medications to treat diarrhea, like Imodium, is called loperamide. And loperamide, taken in extremely high doses, can stave off some of those symptoms. And that must be the concern, that That's it's being concern. taken in high doses. Super high doses. So if you, Imodium is a safe drug. People take it for diarrhea every day. The World Health Organization says it's an essential medication to have across the world to so treat people diarrhea. Taking, if you, people people take watching it, taking Imodium or taking Imodium, they're you fine. You are fine taking yeah. Imodium. Yeah. That is a two milligram dose. What we're finding, though, is that people with opioid addiction are taking 100, 200, 400 milligrams a day to try to stave off withdrawal, and in some cases get high, but I think the majority of it really is to stave off withdrawal. And when you take 100 times the dose, bad things happen. What bad things? Cardiotoxicity. So they get arrhythmias or cardiac arrest. Literally, the heart stops. And that's not the way people otherwise die from opioid overdose, right? It's not, it doesn't cause you to stop breathing and need naloxone and then it turns around. These are people who take the drug and then their heart stops. And you described a moment ago when we were off camera a, a vicious cycle in this of, of trying to feel good at the times where you're not uh, on, on opioids. Mm -hmm. And that is you take the, you take the diarrhea drugs, the Imodium, to save, save off the withdrawal. You take it at high levels. Mm -hmm. And then if you have an over, overdose of that, you can take the Narcan. And the Narcan doesn't work for this. That's what, uh, one of the but things that we have But that's been happening, to, right? People believe that? I, I think that they really might. I'm not sure, but okay. I think that what worries me as a doctor is that people don't realize that the way you die from taking an overdose of loperamide is very different than the way you die from other opioids. And people might be trying to kind of take a, a risk by saying, I'm going to take all this diarrhea medication to get through my day, and then I won't have withdrawal and I'll be able to function. And they don't realize that they're playing Russian roulette because it's not, you know, the more you take, the sleepier you get, and then you stop breathing. This is the more you take, all of a sudden, you've got an arrhythmia and a cardiac arrest. And then what, so, so you have cardiac arrest, and, and you're saying it, it can't be treated by... It uh, can, by but it's not easy. So I... I have a few things as a doctor that I can do for somebody who's got that arrhythmia, but it's not always gonna work. And it's not like just wake them up with naloxone. There's, I've got a few things I can do, but patients die even when they get to the hospital and they have the arrhythmia. Do you think the people that are taking Imodium for this purpose know the risk? I'm not sure they do. I think, in fact, they don't, or many of them don't. And, and is this becoming more, I mean, you're here. It's is more it becoming common. more popular? It's yes. becoming more common. So what has to be done? What should be done? Well, we have to do this and get the word out and let people know this is not a safe way to treat opioid withdrawal. Um, when I go I to buy Sudafed, if, if I want to get the real Sudafed, the yeah. really good Sudafed, right. I have to show my license. Yeah, the real thing. I got right. to show my license to get it. Why, yeah. why can't that happen with Imodium? I think we should look into it. Um, I, you know, anytime you limit access to a medication, you have other patients who need it who now you've inconvenienced, right? So um, you go to buy Sudafed for your cold and, and now you can't find it, right? You're looking all over the shelves and if it's the first time you've ever had to buy it since it's behind the counter, you might leave without ever buying it at all because you said, oh, they're out of it. You know, there, there's, there are inconveniences and even harm to people who need the medication for a legitimate though. reason. We should talk about it. Okay, a warning um, label maybe? But it's maybe? not straightforward. I think a warning label is a good idea. The issue with Sudafed or pseudoephedrine versus loperamide though, is the reason we did that with pseudoephedrine was to prevent people from buying it in bulk and using it to manufacture and distribute methamphetamine, which is a super dangerous drug. Right. This issue is to 
if we were to limit the access to that, that would be to increase the safety of the individual consumer at point of sale. So it still might be a good idea, but it, they're not the same, you know? So what, what, has to, what has to happen? Is this done at the state level or the federal level? It's a little of both, but it is mostly the federal level. You're going to change the packaging of a medication. You're going to put a warning, mandate a warning label. That is a federal decision. That's Does that start FDA. with hearings? Does that start in the legislature? It starts with the FDA primarily. FDA and the, you know, also the people who manufacture the drug and um, hearings of like FDA advisory committees. People are there enough? In. Are there enough people like you? Are there enough agencies in other states that are concerned about this that could, or does the FDA already know about this? I think that this has become a hot topic in the last year or so, and the education is ongoing. And there's people like me, t medical toxicologists, you know, across the country who are doing, who are starting to really talk about this. So I think we're at the beginning. All right, great, thank you. Thanks for coming Thanks in. Thanks very Appreciate much. Appreciate it. Thanks Dr. Diane Colello, Executive and Medical Director of the New Jersey Poison Control Center. Jersey Matters continues right after this. Still to come on Jersey Matters, she is the most famous cow in New Jersey, and now a new law may be named after her. We'll explain when Jersey Matters continues.